This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the UH1H Huey and we're going to do a cockpit tutorial. We're going to look at all of these controls and see what they do. Let's start with what we call the center pedal stool. We're going to turn the pilot off with the right shift and papa. So each unit has a name on it, for instance armament, UHF radio, nav radio and so on. That keeps it nice and organized. Let's start at the bottom left. First of all, the armament panel. Do we want the left, uh, sorry, the right gun selected to fire, the left, or both? And do we want the weapons armament system off, or safe, or armed? Left and right click cycle, uh, forwards and backwards. Next, pretty much part of the same panel, the weapon selector. Do we want to use primary 7.62, so that would be the miniguns on the winglet mounts? 7.62 that says there or we can left click it goes to 2.75 and that will allow us to use rockets they are mutually exclusive we can only use one or the other if we were to use rockets how many rockets from each pod do we want to salvo when we press the trigger one two three four five or six if you leave it on zero then the rockets just won't work at all so just something to remember Next, rocket reset. We can't get this to actually do anything in the manual. It just says that it resets the various switches and controls for the rockets. Anything to add to that, RC? No, that just resets the switches, I think, on the actual launchers. But Roger. Firings. And we can jettison our pods as well, like thus. Next, we've got master audio control. So master audio knob here that we can drag and move about and our radio selector or our, our transmit selector i should probably say we can have private we can have interphone we can have radio one two three and radio four is a spare so private is for talking to different stations within the helicopter interphone with a right click allows us to talk to the ground crew uh, you're going to need to do that if you want to rearm by the way so radio one is going to be the vhf fm two it looks like the uhf radio and three looks like the vhf uh, am Regards receiving on each of these radios, we can have on or off knobs on radio 1, 2 and 3, which are the radios that we just talked about, radio 4 is spare, on the interphone and on the nav radio as well, we're going to have a look at that later. This is a multi-purpose helicopter, we're going to want to talk to various parts of the services, so we need many radios, we've got a UHF, we've got a VHF AM, a VHF uh, FM, a nav, we've got an ADF, we've got all sorts of different radio communications and navigations so first of all starting with the uhf radio ultra high frequency this is going to be i think about 225 up to about 400 megahertz how do we want to first choose which type of frequency we work on do we want to choose it via a preset we've got a preset selected dial there you see the preset there and if you were to zoom in you'd see the different presets uh, which are set up there and the megahertz associated with them you change them in the mission editor do we want to do it manually on this dial here and we can use these guys here to uh, change the various digits in megahertz point kilohertz or do we want to uh, emergency to guard transmit which will be 243 in DCS do we want to disable the squelch or not volume for this particular radio here and our master mode do we want this radio off do we want to transmit and receive? Do we want to transmit, receive and monitor guard in 243? Or do we want to use the ADF, the automatic direction finding function, which is a type of navigation? Next is our VHF AM radio. Here is our currently selected manual frequency, 149 megahertz. Got five controls here. This control here, for instance, is actually two different controls. If I want to change the uh, megahertz digits, I'll use mouse scroll wheel here. And you can see I'm changing those digits. If I want to turn the power off and on, it's mouse uh, button left and right to do that. If you really want to see it better, it's better to become the, uh, uh, the co-pilot and look right and see it from that angle. It might be a lot easier. Uh, turn that back on. Here is the kilohertz digits, mouse scroll wheel, and here is the volume. Uh, really hard, really hard to get to. And it's gonna be left and right mouse click to do the volume. And we're gonna do a comm test there, as you can hear. Next is onto our nav. Um, I think this is VHF AM nav. I stand to be corrected. And we've got the same ordeal here. We've got megahertz tune, kilohertz tune, uh, on, test, and off, I believe that is. 
with the mouse left and right and mouse left and right for the volume and we do not have a test for that this guy will drive our navigation instruments and we'll have a look at them in a bit next is our iff panel iff is not modeled in dcs to this stage at the moment so you won't need to do anything here interestingly the various buttons are modeled and do you know at least look good note that you will at least need to turn master on here to standby um, to ensure that other aircraft can iff us but none of these uh, codes and whatnot are used at the moment next countermeasures all very simple do we want to fire off all of our countermeasures or all of our flares um, at once use that and we can turn this off our mouse scroll wheel this is our counter for the flares so we can manually set that to up to 30 pairs of flares that's going to be and if we were to press the flare dispense button ping that's pairs of flares being sent off the actual armament for the uh, countermeasures safe or armed and the same here here for chaff but this model of the huey we've got in dcs does not have chaff so this is superfluous next the adf radio start with the master mode do we want it off do we want it adf which is automatic direction finding it's navigation do we want it to use an antenna or loop modes uh, i don't think loop and antenna modes are modeled i stand to be corrected but i doubt they would be dcs just isn't modeled that highly at the moment uh, so you probably just be off an ADF. Again, volume. That's the mouse scroll wheel there. Do you want to cycle the antenna loop left or right? Again, pretty sure that's modelled. Do you want to turn the BFO on or not? Pretty sure that's not modelled. Uh, we've got a signal strength meter here. So we can see if we're tuned into the right station or the right signal. Uh, we've got our band. I, th I think this is kilohertz here. I stand to be corrected, but it's a long time. I've got a proper navigation tutorial. And you can go watch that if you want it's many years since i've studied this so i think we've got our, our bands there in kilohertz and within the band you can tune it in and you'll uh, find the uh, signal via the signal strength meter next is our vhf fm radio it's going to be lower megahertz and usually this is going to be finding army ground units you can change the various digits uh, left and right click that's 30.00 megahertz currently different uh, master knob if you like is going to be off transmit receive or retransmit which means uh, to daisy chain messages essentially you know to to retransmit a message volume control uh, we've got here uh, an interesting knob for handling the squelch we can disable the the the, the squelch you know cancelling if you like and we've got two other modes tone and c-a-r-r and i can't remember whether they work or what they do again go and see the tutorial video to fill you out on that next engine controls regards to the warning if our rpm gets too low then we can turn the warning off if we like cancel the warning our fuel whether we want to turn our fuel transfer on and off or our fuel you know cut off valve on or off so on to actually you know allow the engine to work a governor here whether we want auto governor on which you will almost all of the time this will rev the engine correctly automatically based on your uh, various inputs or if you want manual control of the engine rpm you can go there and on the collective here you can go up and down i don't know why you would ever want to do that but you can de-icer for the engine these two guys here don't work next caution panel if i were to test you'd see the cautions you can see we've got one there we're running low on fuel I can reset any cautions and um, whether we want these lights uh, dimmer or brighter uh, as per your night vision next uh, kind of generic panel if you like the metal chip detector do we want to bias it to the main rotor main gearbox do you want to have both the gearbox and the rear tail rotor or just the tail rotor uh, and that's going to be for diagnosing uh, metal chip detection in the gearboxes and the transmissions hoist not activated to turn your basically turn your trim on or off you'll need that on obviously turn your hydraulics on or off that allows the hydraulic servos to work obviously you'll need it on to be able to work interesting little um yellow knob here doesn't seem to do anything as far as i remember and the last thing on the pedal still is if you kind of look under the collective here you'll see uh, various circuit breakers that you can pull in and out that's the central pedestal done onto the front dash pilot side right most the standard issue e2b magnetic compass top right is a barometric altimeter and we can see here we have the ability to adjust the pressure to tune it in and you can see the pressure rating in inches of mercury there 
We're in hundreds of feet. In fact, we've got two different needles, hundreds and thousands of feet. Next is our VSI. It's probably the most important thing on flying a helicopter when traveling slow to avoid VRS. Vortex ring state is to keep a good eye on your VSI. So that's something I've always got my eye on here. Uh, it's measured in upwards or downwards in thousands of feet per minute. Generally speaking, to avoid VRS, I would say when going slow to stay below 1,000 feet uh, per minute sync rate. Next is our chronometer and we can adjust the time there. Next is our cargo release arm light. This will show if up on the roof, we'll see in a bit, that we have allowed, that, we have, that we've armed our cargo release. Regards navigation, in terms of finding radio beacons, we've got a blue light here showing that we are indeed over a radio beacon. With the sensitivity of the beacon detector, whether we want it low or high, and we've got the volume of the, uh, you know, the warning for the, for the beacon uh, there. Next is our uh, ADI, our primary ADI, attitude director indicator, sometimes known as an artificial horizon. We also have the ability to trim or adjust the pitch here and the roll there. Next is our HSI, horizontal situation indicator, if you like our primary uh, navigation method. If you want to know more about these navigation instruments, this guy, this guy, this guy and this guy, please go and watch the navigation tutorial. We go through it all properly there. We have our director needles there and there, again covered properly in the tutorial. We have the ability to fine tune this as per the E2B here with this guy here, again shown in the tutorial. We can uh, change our heading set here, you can see this carrot moving around the outside there. We can decide what is going to drive this instrument, is it going to be our ADF, our automatic direction finding, or our VOR different radios that we looked at back down on the center pedestal will determine the inputs coming in next below navigation again course deviation indicator does exactly what it says on the tin uh, we're going to use that to, to to keep us on course if you like and of course adjust to here again for a proper explanation please go and watch the, uh, the navigation tutorial and we'll show using that move left we have here our basic speedo measuring in knots we have here a slip indicator down the bottom here. It's going to tell us our yaw slip. And this guy here is going to be our turn rate indicator left or right. Up here is the TACO, the RPM for on the inside, our rotor in tens of RPM, so up to kind of 300-ish RPM. And on the outside, our engine times 100, so up to, what is that? Uh, so 7,000, up to 7,000 RPM. And the idea is not to exceed these red lines here. Next, we've got our torque gauge here. This is measuring the torque on the output shaft from the engine in PSI, and we do not want to exceed 50 PSI. Next is our gas producer RPM. This is our N1 section of the engine RPM. Next is our engine exhaust temperature in hundreds of degrees Celsius. Again, with the VSI, the most important gauge in the aircraft, it's one that you'll keep your eye on constantly, especially if it's hot ambient temperature or you're at high altitude and or, should I say, you're carrying a heavy load. It's imperative to keep this guy in the green and not to exceed amber or red or certainly not for very long. Your engine will blow up. You'll get very frustrated. Here we have our radio altimeter showing altitude in hundreds of feet. We can set a uh, low warning there and we can set a high warning there and we can test them. So if I want to test the high warning ping, you can see I'm getting a high warning alarm there and low, I'm already below so I don't need to test the low there. Uh, we've got warning lights, we've got a fire warning light there, we can test that. We've got um, rotor RPM there, and we've got master caution, I think I can actually show there. Next, center dash. The quantity of fuel remaining in hundreds of pounds. The engine oil temperature in Celsius. Transmission oil temperature in Celsius. A voltmeter for DC 
and a voltmeter for AC. We're going to be interested in both. The uh, radio compass that we looked at earlier, whether we want it in magnetic or we want it to work in uh, direction, directional gyro method. We've got our fuel pressure and PSI. We've got our engine oil pressure, PSI, same thing for transmission oil. And the loadings in percentages on our main generator and our standby generator. And on the left side, we've got uh, non-functional here for IFF. We've got uh, simply repeaters for the barometric altimeter, VSI, radio compass, uh, the ADI, and the speedo for the uh, left crew member. Next, we've got pilot controls here. We've got the psychic stick, we've got the anti-torque rudder pedals, and we've got the collective. And we're just going to look at the buttons that you can press with your mouse on them, just for interest. We can do the force trimmer there. We can also press the cargo release there. And the other buttons are only pressable through bindable commands. On the this guy here, on the collective, we can rotate or we can increase or decrease the throttle of the engine. And uh, we can also use that button there to force it into idle, which we won't do now. Uh, landing light on or off, landing light extend, landing light retract, or neither. We've got our searchlight on, off, or stow. If we are manually uh, regulating our engine RPM, we can increase or decrease. And that is all we can actually click on here. And to finish off, we look up. For the pilot, we have this guy here, the XM60 Reflex Sight. We've got a whole video on how to use that with the various commands and options for ranging. Very difficult to use, but watch that video uh, if you want to know more about that. We've got on the other side, on the co-pilot side, we have what we call the Flexi Sight, which is pretty cool. Uh, tucked there. We have the ambient temperature gauge there, reading in Celsius. And let me just position on the overhead. Uh, we've got our navigation position lights and intensity uh, off to bright. Cabin heating, bleed air and aft outlet not functional. Wipers, do we want to just use me or the co-pilot or both? And the setting, we want the wipers on. Uh, the cargo, whether we can have it armed, we can have the release, or we can have it off. Position lights, whether we want the flashing off or steady, dim or bright. Anti-collision lights, on or off. Our interior dome lights, uh, white, off or green. Our pitot heater, on or off. A whole bunch of circuit breakers for the various systems, so you can pull in and out if you want to. Our radio altimeter power, on or off to work our way back down interior lights and sections so interior lights for your your console for your center pedestal for your engine instruments for your secondary instruments and I've run, run out of fuel for our um, co-pilot area for our pilot next um, what is going to show on our AC power voltmeter AB AC phase or BC our inverter, are we going to have main, off, or a secondary inverter? Our uh, DC voltmeter, what we're going to display, We've got various things you can display there. Our main generator, off, on, or reset, under this guy here, if I can get him, which I can't seem to do, but take my word for it. Battery, on or off, let's just keep that all nice and quiet, shall we? Our generator starter here, we're just going to keep it on standby. Finally, our, the one I always get confused on, non-essential uh, bus switch. Do you want to have a crack at that, RC? controls your few things that are on the non-essential bus, and what the switch does is when you have it on normal, it will be powered by the main generator. And when it is on manual, it will be powered by the standby generator. Thank you, RC. I've had a good look around. I think that's everything covered. I hope that was useful, and see you later.